What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Fetter Cairn 16, release number two. Stick around. So we're looking at a Fetter Cairn today. I've got the 16 year old with me and this is a re-review that isn't exactly a re-review. I have looked at the 16 year old before, but that was their first release. That one came out back in 2020 and it was a fantastic whiskey. I loved it. Some bottles were better than others, but today we're looking at the second and it's different. Release number one was matured in bourbon, port and sherry casks. And what was really cool about that one is that it was made using chocolate malt. Uh, like I said, one of the bottles I had was better than the other, but I like that first one so much that I actually got some more backups from my vault over there. Uh, number two is, as I said, different. What they're doing with the Federal Karen 16 line is every year they're going to bring it out again, but every year it'll showcase a different maturation process, we'll have different casks involved, whatever. Actually, the only thing that really ties release number one and number two together is the fact they're both 16 years old and they both do involve a bit of sherry. Our number two here was matured in casks from a family owned bodega in Urez. We've got first fill Oloroso casks, refill Oloroso casks, and Palo Cortado sherry casks. Now, Oloroso, I'm sure you guys have heard of, it's basically the industry standard when we're talking sherry. Palo Cortado is something we see a little bit less of. It tends to be a drier, nuttier, less assertive style of sherry. What's kind of frustrating here is that they don't really clarify the production process. Now they do give us these sherry barrels, but they don't mention if it's a finish, if it's fully matured in sherry or what. Uh, and of course, if it's just a finish, then we can assume that it spent most of its maturation time in bourbon casks. You know, I've tasted it and judging by the color, that would be my suspicion but that's not something that's mentioned at all in the marketing for this bottle. You don't see it on the box or the label. So, huh, curious. Anyway, I'm not gonna sweat it, but it's a little bit weird. Uh, anyway, I gotta say, I do like the concept behind the 16. I think it's a great idea. We have a release that comes out every year. It's got a solid age statement, and every year they can play around with different casts and maturation styles. It gives them room for experimentation, and I think that's great. I think it's cool. As I said, I really did like that first release. This one looks to be much less cask dominated. Reception to this release has been pretty good, pretty positive so far. And it's just one that I was really excited to try. You know, I like the idea that Better Karen is kind of reinventing themselves. And I'm sure this is one that I'll want to come back to, you know, every time it comes out. It's got my attention. Hopefully we'll get a 2022 release soon. I'm very curious to see what kind of direction they take that in. Uh, our release number two here is from 2021, so last year. And it looks great on paper. Let's dive in and see how it tastes. Let's jump into our review and see what the whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. For our specs, we've got a nice healthy 46.4% ABV here. This is non-chill filtered, thankfully. As for the color, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, if you asked me, I would say this looks naturally colored. In fact, it looks really light and bright for something that spent time in Oloroso casks. First fill Oloroso casks. Master of Malt did a write-up for this bottle when it was first released last year, and they described it as naturally colored. Other reviewers have said it's naturally colored. Whiskey Base has it as naturally colored, although never trust Whiskey Base for that kind of thing, by the way. Um, but I've got it right on my bottle here. It says Mitt Farbstoff, so it's colored. I don't know if a bunch of people made mistakes there, or I don't know if it's colored specifically for the Asian market and not elsewhere. I guess that's possible. Uh, and I realize, you know, it's a White & Mackay product. I'm sure half the higher-ups at White & Mackay sprinkle E158 on their Cheerios in the morning. But come on, guys. Not this one. This one's so close to being craft. Give us a natural color here. So you can check out our unnatural color there. I really like the new Fetter Cairn look. I think it's fantastic. I like that it's sort of Art Deco inspired, but still very modern. I like the white label. I like the pop of color here, the fonts, the style. I like our unicorn medallion. It's flashy, it's ostentatious, but it looks cool. Um, five out of five for presentation. Nothing about being non-chill filtered. It does say that it's colored, although that is a legal requirement. We do talk about the sherry casks they used here, although no clarification of whether it's sherry finished or fully sherry matured. That would be nice to know. So our info here, I guess, is not bad. It definitely could be better, but I do like the look. So I did add a splash of water. Let's try our nose. It's dry and it's fruity. 
apricots, mangoes. Yeah, lots of fruits. Uh, pineapple, banana, oranges, white grapes, white wine, white wine tannins, champagne. There's also papaya, ginger ale, powdered sugar, confections, sugar dates. It is drier than you might expect with like white wine tannins and oak spice in here. Really nice complexity. Let's try our palette. Hmm. Okay. Um, nice, nice mouthfeel here. A little bit oily. Um, it's a dry, bright sherry. I'm definitely getting much more of a Apollo Cortado influence here than I am Oloroso. There's oak spice and white pepper. There's white grapes. There's wet oak. There's lemon meringue pie uh, and definitely some nuttiness to this. It's a really nice balance between sweet and tart. It's good. And now our finish. Okay, that's nice. Um, big powdered sugar note here. Uh, earlier when I was making my notes, I tried this with and without water. Without water, we got a lot more ginger and spice in the finish. Here with the water, we're getting a lot more of those fruitier, sweeter notes. I get lemon meringue pie, apricots, honey and nuts, mango, and some oak spice. And there's even a little bit of a savory element in here. We do have some salt in this. Our finish is medium in length. Okay, so release number two is very different from release number one, and as I said earlier, I really liked release number one, and I'll admit, part of me was hoping that they'd keep that chocolate malt thing going from the first one, carry that into the second. They didn't. I really like chocolate malt. I love the coffee flavors, the roasted flavors, of course the chocolate flavors. None of that's in here. This one is much brighter, it's much cleaner than the first one, it's more crisp. The first one had those dark, malty notes, and it had much more of a prominent heavy cask influence. It was just a, it was a heavier, darker whiskey overall. And the thing is, you would think this would be a darker whiskey, especially with all the mention of the sherry casks that are being used. And again, they don't talk about whether it's sherry finished or if it's fully sherry matured. I did the deep dive. It turns out it's a bit of both. Some of the whiskey in here is fully matured in sherry casks. Some of it is just a finish. So there we go. It's confirmed. We do have a bit of a bourbon influence in here as well. Um, but yeah, for all that sherry involvement, it's still a pretty light whiskey. That being said, the Palo Cortado casks definitely left their mark here. This whiskey is dry, it's nutty, it's fruity. White wine is a big part of the flavor profile, uh, and I like that. I like that Palo Cortado doesn't blanket or dominate or consume a whiskey the way that other types of sherry or other kinds of like fortified wine do. What it does is it just like adds an extra layer of subtle complexity. It basically complements the base layers of the whiskey without being too forward, and I love that. Honestly, I wish we saw more Palo Cortado in the whiskey industry. They don't make too much of it. I've got one other Palo Cortado finished whiskey here. Uh, that one is the Royal Broccoli 18. It's one I initially dismissed, but it's growing on me. Uh, but the point being, it's just it's a really cool style of sherry. Unfortunately, I think the casts are pretty expensive. Also, and this is totally off topic, Palo Cortado is a badass name. I want to be Palo Cortado. Or hang out with him or not let him near my daughter. I don't have a daughter. Anyway, this is another success for Fetter Karen 16. This is bright, it's dry, it's nutty, it's sophisticated, it's complex, and it's delicious. It's really good stuff. Not only that, I think that people who prefer the bourbon matured style of whiskey who don't really go for sherry would get along just fine with this one. The lighter profile here does make it feel more honest. The sherry influence is there, but it's gentle, it's more nuanced, and it's just an extra element to enjoy. It doesn't consume the whiskey. I really like this bottle. I'm gonna score it 88. As I said, it's pretty straightforward stuff. It's not a bells and whistles whiskey. This is the kind of thing I'd recommend to people who don't need their whiskey to be too extreme. They don't need the big peat or the big sherry. They're happy with middle of the road stuff as long as it's well done. You get some age in here, you get some of that, you know, gentle complexity, some nuance. If that's your style of whiskey, I think you're going to have a great time with this bottle. It's fantastic. 
So our value here is okay for me. Um, for what we're getting in the whiskey, I'm okay with the price. It's not a cheap whiskey, but then again, 16 year olds these days for the most part aren't cheap anymore. Um, and this one does have more going on than most 16 year olds. As I mentioned, Palo Cortado is an interesting style of sherry. I like the flavors it imparts. It's not something we get too much of in the whiskey industry uh, because the casts are very expensive. And luckily they didn't use that as an excuse to skyrocket the price over the first one. I did pay slightly more than the, the first one for this one, but not too, too bad. And uh, again, I like it. I think it's worth the money. So yeah, I'd say pick it up. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. Of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Federer Karen 16 number two? Have you tried number one? How would you compare them? Are they worth the money? Finally, down in the comments below, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.